ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮ ಸ್ಥಾಪಕತ್ವಂ ಸರ್ವಧರ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪಕ ಆಚಾರ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾಚಾರ್ಯೋ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ತೀ ನಮಃ ಓ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷರ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಫೇತ್ಸ್ ಎಂಬಾಡಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಓ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮೈ ಸ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಯು ಸೋ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಡೌಟ್ಸ್ ರೇಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ವಿಜಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ದಟ್ what happens to the person who has got rid of this ego who has uh, uh, real had the vision of god and he he has transcended from the state of ego how uh, he manages the passions the lust the anger the greed and then sri ram krishna told that for such a person who has had the realization of the god who has had the vision of god the ego is just for the name sake that wretched unripe ego of i am so and so gets totally transformed to the ego of a servant to the ego of a child and he no more boasts of himself that i am so and so that ego sri ram krishna says is like uh, just just for the uh, semblance like uh, when the, the, the from the coconut tree when the branch falls down the branch is no more there we can just see that mark left over by once upon a time there was a branch here now that branch but that mark is there similarly shri ram krishna says for such a person who has had the realization of god who has had the vision of god he will just keep the ego for the name sake he that that that, that ego is not going to injure anybody that ego is like a child sri ram krishna says and like child the person the devotee the aspirant is free from attachment to any of the three gunas no sattva no rajas no tamas he is he has transcended the three gunas and he has become absolutely a child totally dependent on its mother the child doesn't have its own existence then and then uh, uh, shri ram krishna says like the child child never hates anybody there is no feeling of hatred there is no feeling of jealousy there is no feeling of uh, unpleasant attitudes towards anybody child is free from all these uh, calculative uh, 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 attributes he is not uh, hating anybody he is not jealous of anybody so shri ram krishna says such a person becomes like a child he is not attached to anything but the lotus feet of the lord and then uh, shri ram krishna says that uh, uh, this is what uh, one can achieve through bhakti you get a devotion for the lotus feet of the lord and the lord will attract you like the big magnet lord will attract you to him the mother will attract her child to her and there will be absolutely freedom from the egoistic states then uh, shri uh, vijay krishna goswami has another uh, uh, question for shri ram krishna vijay asks but those who discriminate according to vedanta philosophy also realize him in the end don't they shri ram krishna is a uh, staunch uh, you know voter of the bhakti uh, a- a- as the uh, instrument in realizing god now uh, vijay krishna goswami poses a question that even through discrimination neti neti this is not true this is not real this is not real one can attain the realization isn't it so then shri ram krishna says yes one may reach him by following the path of discrimination by following the path of neti neti one may discriminate that this is not real this is not real this is not real the world is temporary the world is just ephemeral hmm? and likewise discriminating negating the existence of all these things around us one can certainly reach uh, the ultimate one can certainly have that final ultimate realization that is called jnana yoga that is what shri ram krishna says but it is extremely difficult path and then shri ram krishna says i have told you about the seven planes hmm? 
I have told you about the seven planes of consciousness. On reaching the seventh plane, the Sahasrara, mind goes into Samadhi. If a man acquires the firm knowledge that Brahman alone is real and the world is illusory, then his mind merges in Samadhi. The moment that realization that it is only Brahma, that is the ultimate truth. Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya, the moment this realization are, uh, 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 is uh, 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 realized, the moment the person, the devotee has this realization that only Brahman is true, everything else is absolutely unreal. They don't have they, they, all these things uh, around us. They don't have any significance. Brahman is the only true entity. Everything else is falsity. Once that realization dawns, then the person, the devotee, the aspirant just gets into Samadhi. But in Kali Yuga, Sri Ramakrishna says, this is a, a, a typical teaching to those who want to follow the path or who are not meant to follow the path of knowledge, who are not meant to follow the path of discrimination. There are a few who can follow, but by and large, Sri Ramakrishna says, it is extremely difficult path for the ordinary beings to follow the path of discrimination, to follow the path of Jnana Yoga, to follow the path of Neti Neti. Sri Ramakrishna says, in Kali Yoga, our body, I mean, we, 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 we depend upon, uh, our existence depends upon the food that we eat. The food that we eat to maintain the body. And the body consciousness is so very strong. We cannot get rid of ourselves from our association of the body with the soul. Sri Ramakrishna says, it is extremely difficult to have this feeling of I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the 24 cosmic principles, I am beyond pleasure and pain, I am above disease and grief, I am above death. Now all these things, literally speaking, one can narrate like parrots, but to have that conviction of this, these statements, I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am beyond pleasure and pain, I am beyond joy and sorrow, I am beyond grief and old age and disease and death. It is not practical, Sri Ramakrishna says. Every moment we are made aware that we are the body. Although we may recite thousand times, ten thousand times, I am not the body. But still, the body makes us realize that I am the body. We cannot, we, we, we may say a thousand times, I don't have any pleasure and pain. But the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, wish, the desire to enjoy those pleasures, it just creeps in. And in the process, we also feel the pain. So we cannot dissociate ourselves from the dualities of pleasure and pain. We cannot dissociate ourselves from the dualities of joy and sorrow. We cannot go beyond these. Every now and then, the slight uh, discomfort to our body, we are immediately, we, we, we go to doctor, we start uh, taking medicines. Oh my God, I am having fever. Oh my God, I am having pain. That body consciousness, only a very few ever free souls, they could attain. Sri Shankara, Shankaracharya could uh, attain that state so easily. He wrote uh, that I am neither the body, I am not the mind, I am not the 24 cosmic principles. Chidananda Rupaha Shivoham Shivoham. That is what he could say. Because these people, these great souls, these eternally free souls, they go beyond the body consciousness so very easily, but it doesn't happen in our case. We are fixed with the body consciousness. And therefore, Sri Ramakrishna says that once the feeling of body is so strong with us, that you cannot dissociate. And then he gave that example of the people tree. He says, you may cut a people tree to the ground and think that it is dead to its very core. It is dead to its very root. But the next morning, you will suddenly see from one corner a little, uh, uh, you know, sprout shooting up. And 
again it is going to grow in a huge people tree. Sri Ramakrishna says this is what happens with the body consciousness of ordinary people. Tens of thousands of times we, we may repeat, I am not the body. But suddenly, little discomfort here and there, our body consciousness just sprouts up, just springs up again. And we cannot put our mind to the seventh plane, to the Sahasrara. One cannot get rid of this identification with the body. Uh, therefore, the path of Bhakti is the best for people in Kali Yuga, he says. It is an easy path. Don't free yourself, uh, 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 get into the process of discrimination when you are not, when you cannot do it. You cannot go beyond the body consciousness. So, it is better that get into the attitude of be a servant of the master, be a child of the mother, be a devotee of the Lord and trade the path of devotion, trade the path of bhakti. And then finally Sri Ramakrishna says, of course, I don't want to become sugar. I want to enjoy the sweetness of the sugar. The moment I become sugar, the moment I become one with the Brahman, there is no uh, existence as such. The only existence is for the Brahman. And the moment I become Brahman, <coughs> I cannot enjoy the Leela of the Brahman. So Sri Ramakrishna says, I don't want to become sugar. I want to enjoy the sweetness of sugar. I want to eat it. I never feel like saying I am Brahman, Sri Ramakrishna says. I say, you are my Lord, I am thy servant. You are my mother, I am thy child. It is better to make the mind go. Now, no, this is one of the uh, very, very strong uh, teachings that Sri Ramakrishna has given. He has told us about the seven planes. Sri Ramakrishna says, always uh, uh, it is better to keep the mind to go between the fifth and the sixth planes. <coughs> to go between the Vishuddha Chakra and the Agni Chakra. Vishuddha Chakra, one is always chanting the name of the Lord. One is always singing the glories of the Lord. At the Agni Chakra, at the sixth chakra, one sees the Lord. One sees the deity that uh, the, he has been worshipping all these days and he cannot become one with the deity. He just enjoys. He knows my mother is there. He cannot go and embrace the mother. He cannot go and embrace the Lord because there is still a barrier of that ego. So Sri Ramakrishna says that it is better it is better to keep our mind moving between the fifth plane and the sixth plane. <clears throat> like boat racing between the two points. Hmm? Like, like from this shore to that shore, this bank to that bank of the river. Boat continuously keeps on moving like this. Likewise, Sri Ramakrishna says, keep your mind, you know, moving between these two centers, these two, uh, 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 the, 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 uh, states, these two planes, the fifth and the sixth. Keep chanting the name of the Lord. Have the vision of the Lord. Let the ego be there. This ego here is not going to be detrimental. This ego here is not going to injure anyone. This ego here is not going to be destructive at all. It is the ego of the child. The moment the mind comes to the Agnya Chakra. I don't want to go beyond the sixth plane and keep my mind for a long time on the seventh plane, Sri Ramakrishna says. I personally, he says, I don't prefer that. Although every now and then Sri Ramakrishna used to get into samadhi, get into the state of transcendental ecstasies. But his innate uh, wish was to keep the mind moving between these two planes. Further, you see, people speak of the... Uh, 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 my desire is to sing the name and glories of the God. Like here, at the Vishuddha Chakra, sing the uh, name and glories of the Lord. Chant the name of the Lord. And it is very good to look on God as the master and oneself as the servant. This ego here, it keeps us in a humble, uh, a lowly uh, position of a devotee and the Lord, a servant and the master, a child and the mother. 
people speak of the uh, waves as belonging to the Ganges. Now, Sri Ramakrishna is giving this uh, typical example, the river Ganges flowing near Dakshineshwar. Hmm? And Sri Ramakrishna says people always refer to waves as part of Ganges. People never say Ganges is the part of these waves. Hmm? But no one says that Ganges belongs to the waves. Waves belong to the Ganges. I belong to my mother. I belong to my master. I as a servant belong to my master. I as a devotee belong to my Lord. It is not that Lord, uh, you know, uh, 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 dwells in me. I mean, it is not that Lord has become me. I am the Lord's. The feeling of I am he is not wholesome. The feeling of soham, saha aham, chidananda rupaha shivoham shivoham. Only uh, Shankaracharya would say that. Sri Ramakrishna says, for the ordinary souls, the feeling of I am he is not wholesome. A man who entertains this idea while looking on the body as the self. Now, looking without getting rid of body consciousness, we cannot say soham. If we say soham, that is the fallacy of our statement. Then we are not true to ourselves. We are not true to ourselves, we are not true to others also. With the body consciousness still steeped uh, in, in our personality, with the body consciousness still lingering with us, we can, we should never say, I am he. First get rid of the body consciousness, then you automatically become, I am he. A man who entertains such an idea of I am he, by looking on his body as the self, causes himself great harm. He cannot go forward in the spiritual life. He drags, on the contrary, he drags himself down. There is no forward movement. And Sri Ramakrishna always says, Hagi jao, go forward, go forward. The man with the body consciousness repeating, I am he. He is dragging himself down. He can never go forward. He deceives himself as well as others. He cannot understand his own state of mind. So the word of caution Sri Ramakrishna giving for the ordinary souls in the Kali Yuga is best is to follow the path of Bhakti. Surrender yourself. Get into that uh, position of Sharanagati. The ultimate surrender. You are the magician. I am just an instrument in your hand. You, you are the, uh, the, 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 the master, you are the charioteer, I am just the chariot. You are the puppeteer, I am the puppet in your hand. Get into that state of Sharanagati and then Sri Ramakrishna says, your movement forward will become so easy that you will also attain to Brahmatnyana. It isn't any and every kind of bhakti that enables one to realize God. One cannot realize God without prema bhakti. And again, regarding the bhakti, Sri Ramakrishna says, one has to have that prema bhakti. One has to have that intense devotion. Another name for prema bhakti is raga bhakti. God cannot be realized without love and longing. That yearning, strong yearning. Unless and until that strong yearning sprouts in our heart, you, we cannot get the true devotion. Simply becoming devotee, 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 it, 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 it won't take us forward. It may take us a little more uh, ahead, but that won't make our forward progress so strong. We have to have the intense yearning that is called as the Prema Bhakti, the Raga Bhakti. Unless one has learned to love God, one cannot realize it. Then one has to focus all the channels of the love towards the lotus feet of the mother, towards the lotus feet of the Lord. Only then Sri Ramakrishna says that bhakti will make you take, take you to the point of realization who your deity is and who you are. And that is the way of getting the Brahmadhyana ultimately through the path of bhakti, Sri Ramakrishna says. Prema Bhakti, Raga Bhakti, the intense yearning, longing for the Lord, longing for the Mother, that is what is required, that is what can be attained on the path of devotion, Sri Ramakrishna says. Om Namah Shri Bhagavate Ramakrishnaya, Sri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu, Jai Thakur, Jai Maha, Jai Swamiji.